Okay, so we have a new Gemini model out, and this is the Gemini 2.5 flash image model, AKA Nano Banana. So a lot of people have talked about this model. You've probably seen people talking about it. I think for those of us who've been testing it for a while, I wanted to talk about it, but we're under embargo. As of today, you can try this model out in AI Studio and basically select it and try it out. So you no longer have to go to LM Arena or try it in some other format. So just quickly going through this, this is a model that actually has like multimodal understanding. It also has advanced reasoning in that. So that means that not only can it just take your prompt and try and make a picture, it actually can kind of reason over your prompt of what you're trying to do and then work out how to either generate an image or edit an image. So not only can this generate images from scratch, but it can take an image and then edit it. And one of the cool things is that as you generate images and you want to change small parts of it, you can do this totally conversationally. So you can see here that we've got like this input image. We can remove the door mirror. We can change the background. We can change the girl's hair. All of these things are at a new level of basically how the model responds to the prompt. It also has the ability to maintain character consistency across images. So as you edit an image, you're not actually messing up the actual character that's there. You're just editing things around that particular character, which can be really cool. So this opens up a whole world of different things that we can do with these kind of things. So we can put input images in and then have them transformed. Like you can see here with the butterfly becoming sort of dress. And you can do things like restore images or fix things up. So let's jump in and start off by looking at an example of doing the reasoning with an image and compare it to some other things out there. Okay, so here you can see I've got Mid Jenny open and I've put in the prompt, make an image of a frozen lasagna that has been cooking in the oven for four days at 500 degrees. And you can see that basically it just makes an image of nicely cooked lasagna in here, right? There's nothing abnormal about this. It hasn't really worked out that the whole idea of that it's been cooking for so long. And that's something that's not going to give us a nice lasagna like this. It's going to give us something different. All right, let's take the exact same prompt and put it into Nano Banana. Okay, so here I'm just starting with just this prompt, nothing else. We run it and we can see that, okay, it's going to generate the image out. Look what it's got. It's got a massively burnt lasagna. So it's like it's actually reasoning about things in the image much better than just standard image generation stuff in here. You can see we've got it still in the oven. We've got it massively burnt on top. We've got lots of smoke and stuff going on in there. And this is one of the advantages that we're getting from having a large language model in there. In this case, the Gemini 2.5 flash model in there that actually captures the representation of the text much better to help it to be able to generate an image, which is more consistent with the prompt that we put in here. Okay, so another example of the model using the large language model to do thinking before it generates an image are examples with memes. So you can see here, I basically just said, make a funny meme about Gen AI versus old deep learning. And if we open this up, we can see that, okay, it's old deep learning trying to interpret a cat picture. Okay, it's got some spelling mistakes there. And then Gen AI generating a whole movie about cat nights in here. So that one, maybe not that funny, but it can definitely get this idea. I haven't given it too much guidance in the prompt at all. So it's reliant on basically using the reasoning of trying to work out from a very small prompt, what is it that I actually want in here? And so you look at it, this example is here, I'm deliberately being vague, right? I ask it, make a funny meme about AI putting everyone out of a job, except for one occupation, which would be funny. So the model's response is that it comes back with, okay, this is going to be a meme for you. It's going to describe what it's going to do. It gives some text overlay and stuff like that. Then it's basically hope you find it amusing. And it comes up with AI has replaced all human jobs, except for professional squirrel cosplay event planner which I do find quite funny, right, out of this. So it's amazing that, like, I didn't mention anything about cosplay, I didn't mention anything about squirrels, but because it's got the representations from the Gemini model in there, it's able to use that 
to process and do the sort of chain of thought thinking, I guess, internally. We're probably not actually seeing that. We're just seeing a summary of stuff in here. And then it generates this image out, which in this case, I think the meme is actually quite funny in here. So it can be really funny just to give this thing a whole bunch of just make me a meme about this, make me a meme about that. And you'll find that at certain times, yes, it's going to miss and not come up with something great, or there's going to be spelling errors in there and stuff like that. But just the fact that it can come up with some of these interesting ideas really shows that we're taking a step forward with this image model in that we can get away with giving it much more vague prompts and it's able to basically run with those, do some thinking, and then generate the image out. Okay, so if we come and look at another example, we can see this example of a cute plastic toy character. So this is pretty simple, right? Asking it to make a cute plastic toy character, and sure enough, it makes something quite good. All right, so now I'm giving it very specific directions, and I'm actually giving it multiple directions in here. So the first sort of thing I'm saying is remove the background, give me three versions of it, showing it from the front on side view and rear view. And you can see the model response is sure enough, it removes the background. It gives me the front view, which is the same as what we had up here, but now we've got the background removed. We get the side view. It generates that without going back to the user and we get the rear view. Now the rear view is perhaps a little bit weird where he's put his hands behind his back there, but certainly the rest of it is very consistent with that initial image there. And you can even do things like this, where I ask it, make a view of it from the top of the front looking down. And you can see, sure enough, it's able to work out that, okay, what would this image look like looking down on it? Finally, we can do things like change things in the image, make it so that it's got a red helmet. And then finally, okay, put it in some nice packaging that we could sell it in a toy store. And you can see, sure enough, it's given us a really nice image with this character that we started out made for something for selling it in the toy store. So this ability to consistently change the image over different generations and even to do multiple generations of the image itself is one of the things that makes this model really interesting. Okay, so another thing that you can do with this is use it for product images. So you can see here, I basically asked it to make a new Tom Ford scent called Sandy Moments, and it's able to make a bottle in the style of that product quite nicely. We can do a bunch of different things with this though. And you can see with the initial one, it actually puts in a bunch of text down the bottom here. If we want to get rid of that, we can ask it to get rid of the text and you can see that it has no problems getting rid of that. If we want to then basically take this image and reuse it for a different setting or to recreate some sort of setting like this, if we were using Photoshop, we would have problems that we've got color through the actual glass. But using a model like this, no problem. We can actually just get it to extract out the background. And not only do we lose what we expected, but we don't have any issues with wrong colors through the glass and stuff like that. Another thing that we can do is if we've got just a product image and we've got something like this, we can actually put in two images, give it a prompt of how we wanted to display those and then combine them. So you can see here, we've basically combined the product image with this picture, or a different picture of a beach, et cetera, and put this in, and it's been able to make it fit in that environment. So there's a lot of things that you can do like that to play around with this model and certainly use it to do things like try on, do things like a whole bunch of different skills with this kind of thing. Another thing is that amazingly, this image actually lets you use some celebrities. Now it doesn't work for every celebrity, doesn't work for everyone who's famous, but you can see here, I've asked it, make me a picture of Donald Trump standing in front of a banana sign. And sure enough, we've got a pretty good picture of Donald Trump there standing in front of these signs. Now, obviously you have to be very careful, I think, with the legalities of how you use this. But the model is extremely good at understanding the representations of those, being able to add more people into the sign, being able to subtract people from the sign. I can see here, I basically say, put in Brad Pitt, take away Brad Pitt, then add in a crowd. But interestingly here, it hasn't made the crowd the same height as Donald Trump, right? It's basically made this crowd 
around him. So clearly I would need to be prompting this a bit better to get better results from this. So honestly, I was very surprised to see you are able to put the celebrities in there. I've been told from Google that this is open. I don't know if every version of this model around the world will actually have access to the celebrities, but it's certainly something that you can play with and actually make selfies with different people and stuff like that. You can do the same idea of this with a human where you basically put in two people taking a selfie together, doing a variety of different things like that. So really this whole model is actually made for getting representations out and then combining them or rechanging those representations. And this is something we've seen going back to the 2.0 Gemini Flash model. But really this model takes it to a whole new level of just being able to prompt these things into existence. Okay, so if you want to get started with this model, you can come into AI Studio and select it. It actually will be called the Gemini 2.5 Flash Preview Image. And if you want, you should also be able to come into the Google Cloud platform probably later today and see the updated 2.5 version of the flash image generation in here as well. So let me know in the comments what you think is going to be the best use of this. I'm really curious to see what people build out of this. Certainly, I've been playing with image restoration, and it's been pretty amazing at being able to restore old images, colorize images, do some of those tasks. But I'm really curious to see how people are going to use this for advertising, for marketing, for a whole bunch of different tasks going forwards. So let me know in the comments what you would like to use this for. Anyway, as always, if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.